French President Emmanuel Macron's three-day visit to China is coming to an end. During his trip, Macron has repeatedly pushed his counterpart Xi Jinping to help end the conflict in Ukraine. During his last day in China, Macron visited the Chinese city of Guangzhou, where he was surrounded by hundreds of screaming students and people desperate for one selfie. Something diametrically different from China's own leader. While answering questions posed by university students, Macro acknowledged the rise in tension between the United States and China as strategic. Et cette montée des tensions, elle a un caractère stratégique entre les États-Unis d'Amérique et la Chine. On pourra y revenir aussi de manière très ouverte. Et elle s'accélère avec les grands conflits du moment et en particulier le retour de la guerre en Europe et l'agression de la Russie contre l'Ukraine. Cette guerre, c'est une violation manifeste de notre droit international. C'est un pays qui décide de coloniser son voisin de ne pas respecter les règles, de redéployer des armes, de l'envahir. Et elle vient perturber très profondément notre paix à tous, notre ordre international, et elle risque de précipiter en quelque sorte cette tension stratégique. Macron also urged students to embrace a critical spirit that would allow them to become free, rational individuals. Apart from the war in Ukraine, Macron's visit also stressed on a firm trade partnership with China, which is being seen as a crucial point for France. The French leader is accompanied by more than 50 French business leaders. This includes chiefs of Airbus and EDF. Earlier, Airbus announced that it is set to open a second final assembly line in China that will double its production capacity in the country. For more on this, we are being joined by Natalie Malgus from Paris. Welcome to the broadcast. As the high-stakes diplomatic visit comes to an end, do you think Emmanuel Macron was successful with everything on the agenda? I think he would register a few mild successes, especially when you think that much of the agenda and the trip to China was to talk about what is playing out in Ukraine, how China can assist in convincing Russia to end that war, and conversations around trade. Many commercial deals were signed, and as you mentioned, there was an entourage of over 50 uh, investors, bosses, big bosses of, company, uh, of companies across various sectors. Um, so on that front, uh, the commercial front and on the lines of trade, I think for sure the president, the French president Emmanuel Macron is going to register some success in his final early dinner that he has with his presidential counterpart, President Xi, a little later today. That will be one more uh, push for him to just reiterate what the last few days have been all about, really convincing China to uh, use its influence, to use its close relationship with Russia to make some headway in bringing the war in Ukraine to an end. Now, as you mentioned, the visit will bring Macron and Xi to the same dining table. But what about the diplomatic table? Do you think this could be a breakthrough for France and China's ties? Potentially much of uh, the sentiments here in Paris was that of a quiet optimism that there would be uh, some uh, success on that front. Uh, I do think that one last opportunity, just the two uh, heads of state together around a table will allow for a more easy flow of conversation. We know that this is a private last dinner where they are able to hash out everything they perhaps weren't able to say with the glaring eyes of the media and uh, some of the diplomats that had accompanied uh, President Emmanuel Macron and uh, the European Commission head Ursula von der Leyen this week. This is uh, for sure uh, one of the things that they will discuss at that uh, early dinner a little later. All right, Natalie Malgis, thank you for getting us all those insights from Paris.